What's going on everyone? So today I'm gonna to be talking about the new Sony a6400. Now when this camera was announced, I was really excited because I've been trying to find a new camera that's going to offer uh, better autofocus than what I was currently using. Now I used to use a Canon ADD, uh, which had the dual pixel autofocus and it worked fantastically. Um, however, I wanted to try to cut down on my, my items and everything that I was carrying with me. So I got rid of the DSLR and I picked up a Panasonic uh, FC2500, um, but I was never really all that pleased with the camera. It worked okay, um, but I was just used to a higher quality autofocus and video and picture quality. And so I started switching pack over to cameras with lenses that I could swap out. First, I picked up an A6000, which I've got right here. Then I picked up an A6500. Um, and then of course, a couple months later, when this was announced, I sold the A6500 and I kept the A6000 just in case I needed a decent camera in the meantime. Now the big focus on this camera is the new autofocus with video and photo. It's supposed to do face tracking and eye tracking. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, dig into this and check it out. And first things first, when I first ordered the camera, I ordered it body only. However, it seems like the body only is taking a little bit longer to get into retailers. Uh, so I decided to order the A6400 along with the 18 to 135 lens. Now I also have the 18 to 105 lens. So I'm gonna be doing some head-to-head -head comparisons. I've seen some reviews and uh, photo examples online of both of these lenses, um, but I wanted to try it out myself and figure out which one works best for my needs. So let's get this thing opened up and see what's inside. Now testing today for the A6400 is going to be done inside today. Unfortunately, it's raining outside, so I won't be able to utilize the, the camera outside, uh, but we'll be able to check out performance inside with a variety of the lenses and see how well it does in low light conditions with autofocus, uh, because that's typically where cameras struggle. All right, so opening up. Start off with uh, some paperwork and manuals, which I'll probably never read. All right, so starting off here, we've got the camera itself. Um, of course, the other thing on top of the autofocus performance, the big thing here is that the screen will now flip up. So you'll be able to um, do video logs and everything and see yourself without needing to set up an external camera or monitor. Now, of course, when you compare that to say an A6000, um, the screen tilts and moves a whole lot more because that's where you're at with the A6000. And of course the 6400 lets you fold the screen all around. All right, so got the camera and let's take a look at this lens. Uh, of course, comes with a lens hood and body caps apparently, which fall off. Thanks, Sony. Um, doesn't look like there's any issue, of course. Um, lens quality feels pretty good. Um, this was the most expensive kit lens that you could get uh, as a package with this camera. Um, and it seems like people are getting decent performance out of it. So hopefully we'll be lucky and it uh, will work well. Next up is going to be a power adapter. Now it looks like Sony, of course, has moved out of having uh, external chargers and just gone to having a uh, plug and USB plug, which goes into the camera to charge the battery. Um, finding external battery chargers um, that charge one, two, even three batteries is pretty easy to find on uh, Amazon and they're pretty cheap as well. Camera strap and the eyepiece cover. Oh, and a USB cable in case you don't have 10,000 of these at your house already. All right, so let's get this thing powered on and start doing some tests. All right, so this is handheld. Um, I'm also using audio from the camera, um, so I won't be using a microphone anymore. Um, it should be decent audio. We're inside, there's no wind or anything, uh, but we'll still switch over so that way we're only using the A6400. Now, first thing uh, off the bat here is I've got the screen flipped up. I'm looking at the camera lens. Now, if I look at the screen, you can probably tell that I'm looking at the screen. Now, out of the corner of your eye, you should be able to kind of identify where you're at in the frame without needing to look at the the frame and look like you're not looking at people. Uh, so right now, looking right at the lens and the 18 to 105 has a poor minimum focus distance. Uh, so if I go out of focus, it might just be that I've gotten too close, um, but that's just sort of one of the downsides of that lens. Otherwise, we will just sort of do a couple quick video tests in here just to test the autofocus and see how well it's working. And I'm not playing with any colors uh, or anything like that. I am in manual mode, so I'm keeping the shutter and uh, 
aperture consistent and I'm letting uh, ISO adjust itself. And uh, so yeah, but otherwise we're not editing. I'm not adding any extra stabilization. So this is all just in the, uh, the lens itself because the body of course does not have uh, stabilization. Apparently I'm using this DJI Osmo mount backwards or upside down and clicking on the door focuses pretty quickly. Back on the camera, again, pretty darn quick. And considering it is focusing on white walls, basically, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So I'm clicking on the camera right now and the wall is about eight or nine feet behind it. And there we go, hunting a little bit. Uh, but again, that's a white wall. Uh, so I'm still impressed that it even gets close. Now, when I click on the door frame, there's a little bit more uh, contrast in the, the colors and textures there. So it should focus a little bit faster. Yeah, there we go. So it's still pretty darn quick. So this first test is going to be with the 18 to 105 and we are set at 18 millimeters right now. Now we're on to the 18 to 135, and again, this is at 18 millimeters. Whoops. <laughs> and this is the 1650, set at 16 millimeters. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 50. So now we're at 50 millimeters, and here's the test. This is gonna be it looks like it does a pretty good job keeping me in focus, but we'll find out once I uh, get this on a larger screen. All right, so this time I'm doing the same test again. I've got the 50 millimeter on there. Now to make things a little bit more complicated for it, I set it to 1.8, so we're fully wide open right now. Uh, so our depth of field will be pretty small, uh, but we'll give it a shot and uh, see how well it does. And this is just walking normal speed. And that right there was walking briskly. Enter the frame, out of the frame, pop up right over here, and then right here. 1.8 looks really good. Love shooting my Judging from the LCD screen, uh, it looks pretty darn good. Now I've put the 55 to 210 lens on. I'm shooting at 55 millimeters right now. Um, we're kind of space constrained uh, here, so I'm going to uh, hope for the best. And that's just walking normal speed. We'll try one more time, but moving a little faster. Hopefully it did well. Now for the fun part of 210. I don't know that this is going to work. I'm literally against the wall here and my head is like whole frame almost. But try it anyway. So I stopped and it looks like it caught focus. to tell. 
So the lens I'm, the lens I'm using now is the 18-105 to and I'm set at 105 millimeters. This right here is the 18 to 135, and again, I'm shooting at the max zoom, so 135. And this is just a walking test, uh, handheld with the 18 to 135, set at 18 millimeters. And again, the same test, but this time I'm using the 18 to 105. This is going to be the 16 to 50 at 16 millimeters. And this is the 16 to 50, top on this box here and then down the hall. And let's try that zoomed in. This is the 50 millimeter at 1.8. Fifty five to two ten. And let's go ahead and ramp that up to two ten. See the details on this fox, look at his eye. And taking a while to hunt. And Psych is not, there we go. So 210 on the little bear and over to the fox. So it looks like going from the bear to the fox is okay, but going from the fox to the bear, oh, there we go. This time it seemed to work. And just for reference, this fox is only about five feet away from me. This is the 18 to 135. Focus on the bear down there. It's hard to tell just because it's so wide. All right, and now let's zoom in to uh, 135. There we go, we've got the fox face. And let's move over to the bear. Pretty good performance, actually. Back to the fox. All right, back to the bear. Yeah, not bad. The uh, 18 to 135 here seems to do pretty well with this uh, situation. And this is the 18 to 105. Around the fox, go around the bear. Back on the fox again. Do the bear. So now let's go ahead and uh, zoom in. So there we are, 105 on the fox. Switch over to the bear. There we go. I think the 18 to 135 was faster. That was decent. Yeah, the 18 to 135 might have been faster.
So that's going to wrap it up for today's test with these various lenses. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And then be on the lookout because I just ordered a gimbal. And so we'll have that used uh, here on the A6400 um, to hopefully take away some of the vibrations and jitters uh, that you have, of course, when it's handheld. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.